record. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, you, what do you mean by placing uh, means? Please, sir, this uh, bubble forum should be here, and yeah. I want this in full screen. Yeah, yeah. So go I to the know. go to the design. Okay. Now you can see if you go up. Let me request you to give me control. Now you'll get a message to give me control. Mm -hmm. Give me, see, this is the place where it need to be. Yeah? It need to be go into here, yeah? So basically, if you drag it and drop it until you see the red, see now, I see there is a red line. If I keep it there, it will stay there, see? But before what you were trying to do, I'll show you. You just take it, you were trying to take it, and you place it somewhere here. It, it's not there. You need to wait until you see the red. Now there is red, you leave it. Then it stays within that box. Okay? The second, this one, I don't know why you have here. Maybe you didn't need it. Delete it, delete it. Now you have some other things here. This, oh, you should not delete it. That's something else. Okay, we'll bring it back. I don't know what you meant by this one. This one should be inside here. So I take it when 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 this one, this is maybe a text you put here. Yeah, this is a text. This is a text. Text, you cannot put things inside a text or a shape. You need to put things inside a group. Things can be put in group, not into a text or into a shape or into anything. So you need to have a group. You find group. This is why they call it group. It can group multiple things. I come here, I do this one here. And now I can move this one inside it when it becomes red. It becomes inside that, that group. You see, this is the group. Now, just for you to see it, I will change this group color just to see it, to know this is the group, yeah? Otherwise we would not know if we are in the group or outside the group. So I'll go to color background. Let's select any color just to, to know. You see now, this is a group. So inside it, I come with things. Now this one outside it. If I want to move it inside, I move it until see the square became red. And see around it, there is a red. I hope you see the red. Then I leave it, it stays there. That's basically, so you can logically, grow things can be put inside a group. If I put a text box, for example, something like this, and some people do this sometime, I do this text box, and I want to move this one inside it. It will never go inside it because the text box cannot hold uh, other item. It cannot, only the group or repeating group or floating group or pop-up can hold other things. So if I try to put this one inside, it will never stay inside. It will always go somewhere else outside because this is not a group. Hmm? So this has to go inside the group. You need to make sure you start thinking of the group and putting things in group so you can control it. Now, because it is in group, if I click on that group, I can center it. If I go here and say center, the whole group will be centered because they are a group. Yeah. Sometimes, some of the mistakes we make, I'm clicking on this one. I think I'm clicking on the group. No, I'm clicking in a, now at the moment, I'm clicking an item inside a group. So if I do anything to this item, it will be just to this item. The group will not be affected. If I want to move the whole group, I have to select the group, okay? That's important, I think. The other thing, you have extra things you added left and right on the page, which you cannot see. This is because when you add a group, let me show you this one. I think you know it by now. If I add a group without any color, it will be there. Yeah, but I will not see it when I look at the page. 
So if I add something else, this will take space. So I need to make sure either I give it color or delete it. So this is how you place things, put them into groups. First create a group, put the things inside it. Now this group, usually what I do every time I said, I put the group, I go to the layout and change it to column. That's what I do always. This way, it will be grouped like this. So I think this one you're dealing with, you can center this one now in that group. If you want, now it's centered. And inside the group, which we have now, this is the group which we want to also center it. You can center it by clicking here. This group, I can add other item in it. I can add input. I can add the repeating group. I can add another group inside it. So group is the best thing if you want to be able to control things. Otherwise, you lose control. Things goes left, right, up, down, you don't know. Put them in group, you will be able to control. So I'm adding here input. I can add this input, for example, a move it previous. Yeah, I can center it. Okay, I can give it a width. Let me leave this one. If I come here and say, I want to make it a percentage, I want to make it 70%, for example. This is the way. So you need to start working with groups. That's your only challenge. Your challenge is you throwing things on the page without grouping them together. So you lose control on them. Like you are in your room and you throw your things left and right. They will be lost. But if you start putting them into boxes or into uh, groups, you can move this group. You put one, you put your uh, clothes in and then you put in all of them. You can take that one and move it somewhere else. Yeah, so grouping is the logical way of controlling your page to become easy on you to control. That's what your, your challenge with it. And as I said, when you drop something, you need to wait to see the red uh, border comes here. I hope you've seen that. For example, if I add a button here, I need to add a button here. If I come and draw it here, it's outside. Yes, clearly. Yeah? Now, if I want to move it inside, I can carry it until I see the red borders. Now it will go inside. Okay, so just work on groups. I did show you last time some nice videos you can watch and they will help you manage this, this groups. Uh, just only the groups. That's the only challenge you are having uh, here. Okay. okay. And one more thing is that I want this in full screen, but when I preview yeah. it, yeah. it does not yeah. work. Very good. I'll show you that. And you double click on somewhere on the page. Now you have so many additional items on your page, which when I click, I'm not clicking. See, there's so many groups you added here, but you don't know, you didn't see them. Now you have so many other additional things in your page, which you added. Now, if you want to make it a group, you double click somewhere on the page until this one comes. This one should have here index. Index mean you are on the page. But if I click here, the, I am in the group. In the group, no, I need to be on the page. So I click somewhere until I see index. Then I go to the layout, I make it column. That's, that's good, you already have. The same thing now you apply to this one. You click on this group, watch the header. You want to make it full screen. So you click here, you click here. You, are you moving the mouse? You click here and make it 100%. Now this is full uh, full page uh, becoming. You need to make it fix 100%. Now, if you run this one, it will come a full page uh, in, in your case. If you do the preview, you will see it hopefully comes a full page. Now you have some issues with your page as well. Let's, I think you left some space it's 100%, but there are additional things you added here that are not properly done. You have some additional things. I don't know why. Okay, this one should be centered. Should be centered. 
and the page the page should be column you have some errors in your code as well so we say this is column width okay and you should now refresh hopefully you will yeah i think your your page is bigger than the size but we can now come here we said we'll make this 100 percent but i think you added this one inside another group it seems that you added this inside another group so let's go there and see if you have done that I think you have group inside group uh, to do. But you have person to this one should be column and minimum width. Your design need to be fixed from the beginning. You have so many other things added. I think you have something added here, which we don't see. You added some additional components because basically you are throwing groups on the page where you don't see them. You don't change their background. Then it will become a little bit uh, complicated. Like I have this one here. I don't know what is this extra thing you add here. There's some extra components you have on your page which you're not able to, to see because you, you keep adding them. But this is fine now. We remove that one. Now you can see it's coming full page because you have extra things. I just deleted those extra things because you keep dropping things, as I said, and you don't uh, delete them or do something with them, like changing the width or moving them where they should be. Sometimes this is okay at the beginning, but if you start Zoya working with the groups, then your things will become nicer and beautiful. You can see now your is full page, everything is good. Okay, so work with the groups, please, Zoya. Like, can I have this here somewhere? Yeah, what do you want to do with this? This are okay if you look at your page here. If you look at your running page, I'm just using mouse, things looks nice. You have if AQ, if you want to change it to something else, change it to something else. But the things looks nice. Maybe you need to remove this logo and move this one here because that's your logo. You don't need maybe this one, you delete it because it's extra. Remove anything you don't need. You don't need blog, delete blog. How you delete it? You delete it from here. You don't need blog, let it go. You don't need this one, let it go. Don't keep anything that you don't need. So your design looks better. And this one, we need to center it. I think you click something, I click something, but that's where we do this, yeah. You can click on any one, and then as we said, to make it centered, and this one make it centered horizontally so, or vertically. So things will, will look symmetric and same. Not one is center up, one center down. This is a basic design aspect. You need, you need to look at it. But your pay, it looks nicer now, but still you need to do lots of things with this one. Yeah? Okay, sir, thank you so much. So we fixed that, that issue, hopefully. Then let's go and Look at the other group. I see nobody raised hand. So maybe you want me to start uh, explaining other things. So, so can you stop sharing? Very good, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. So what we did last time, if we remember what we did, let me go back to bubble and then I'll share screen. I need just a second to open this page and then we'll share the screen. Remove this one, share screen, that's the one. Very good, so last time we were working on our app and we did some nice things, if you remember. 
And what we did, we allowed you to, I don't want to upgrade. This was our last version, which what we did, we created something like this, yeah? We need to finish this quickly so we can give you other application that you can look at it. So what we did last time, we created this one. You are able to post your things. You are able to like what other people uh, submit. Yeah, or dislike it. I think I have to click here. And we added those uh, uh, actions that, that we, can, we, can, we can do. Okay. So today, what we need to do, we need to do more than that. What we can do, we will add comments so people can click on it and add comments. Remember also last time we added another page for friends. So you click here, you start seeing people there and you select them. Those who you select, they will see your name there. And we said, if you click on the name, at the moment is not working. These are the requests. We can add it to friends. Yeah. So let's do that, and then we'll go to the to the other uh, part. So now you can request. I can request Zoya to be in in my uh, list. Zoya will see my name on that page. So let me give you the link that you can try. What is the Page here is it. This is the chat. Everyone, and I'm putting this one in the chat. Now, if you click on this link, you can see my page, which we created last time, and you will be able to ask people to to become your your friend. So I'm requesting some people to become my friend, uh, and I don't know who want to be my friend. Myself became friend of myself. That's something I should not do. But anyway, that's that. now. Now what I need to add something here, when people click here, they accept that friend and the friend will disappear from here and appear in other list called friends. So these are requests, beside it, we need to get friends. So how I can do that? I add a button here where people can accept uh, being there. I think button is not the issue. Yeah, so let's go to the page called friends. We have page called friends and this page called friends has uh, two things. One has two groups, yeah, two groups. One group is a repeating group of list of users. And the way we created this one, we brought a repeating group, we put it in the page, then we selected the type of content at users and the data source we said search for users and this gave us all the users that's what we did then we added components one is the image and we said current cell user for photo the other one we added is the name current cell user for name then the third one is the email current cell user email and then we added a button called request. We said the request will add the user who requested that request to the list of requests of the user who have been requested to accept the, re the request. Oh, this sounds like uh, music, huh? or maybe. So if I am the user, I click here, my name will be added to the list of those people, uh, to this person, list of people who requested to join him. Okay, so let's click on it. Notice with the repeating group, we did only with the first line. The other lines, we cannot even edit them. If I want, I cannot click on them. Just only the first line. And you do the first line, all the other lines will be the same, automatic. So you don't need to waste your time. So when we click on request, what we did, we made changes to this person or this current cell, this person, current cell. We made changes to him or to her by adding the current user 
to the request list. So let's do that. Click here and look at what we have. We use make change to which one we want to change. We want to change this current user cell. Yeah, current user cell. The one being selected when the one we click on. That one, what we'll change do, we'll add to the request list of that person, uh, the current user. And this will add him. Now, same thing I want to do now, if I go back here, the same concept we will use to accept this user. Let's make this one a little bit bigger. I think uh, this one is need to be maybe 250. Yeah, make it 250. I made it a little bigger. I, there's a group, it's inside. We'll make it 280, the outside group. So now I have a group and inside it a repeating group. Okay. This one I need to add here uh, to, to say accept. Yeah, so we need, when we click here, this person will be added to my list of approved people. Yeah, so we'll add a button here. Where are the buttons? They are here. So we'll add one here. Yeah, we will select this outline. We will say accept accept yes salam it became accept now we just give it five to the right and five to the left so it looks nicer now what workflow we should do here we should say the current user add to the current user the selected list so let's click here and go to the workflow now, I am the one who looking at the page uh, at, at, the, at the moment. If I click on anyone, that means I'm accepting him or her to be part of my group. Yeah, if you, if you come to the page here, look at this one. Now, I am the user. So anytime I click here, I will add this person, Zoya, to my accepted group. If I click on this, hash will be added to my accepted group. If I add this, Imad will be added to my accepted group. So I am the current user. So I need to change the current user and say, add to your list this person. So I click here, I'll go to data and make change. And who I want to change? The current user, myself. What I need to do in myself, I need to add to myself the approved list that I'm accepting. I need to add to it this current user, current cell user, yeah? And this way it's added. Now, the, the issue we have, we have to fix it. But always good you see the issue before I fix it. Okay. Now, if I look here, I can now start clicking, but nothing will happen. Yeah, it's it's there's something happening in the back end, but it's not appearing. Let me stop and show you what I mean by that. Now we need another list here. We'll call it accepted. Yeah, let's copy paste. Usually it goes down here. We'll call it approved. Approved. This one. We'll call it approved. And this approved, we will select instead of request, approved. Okay, that's one thing. The other thing, if you remember last time, we, we can hide this one. Once someone is added to approve, we should hide the accept here. So this accept should not come here again. So if I click here, if I say current user, current user approve contains this current user, if he is already added to my approve, then in this case, 
this should not appear the button. So you can see now, if I do here, you will see now Zoya, I added her, she is there, but it's not coming, coming here anymore. Now I need to remove this, accept or remove it. I can say remove later or something. Now, if I add this user, see that the button is deleted. Basically, the, he went there, yeah? But let's do one thing. Once I add someone here, should disappear from the request, should not stay here. So how I do that? I want this one to disappear from the request. So I need to remove him from the request. Once I add him to approve or add her, should I remove him from the request? So how we do that? Again, back to here, accept. We click on appearance. We click on start. And now you notice now we added this person to approved. Now we can remove him from request. There is a request and we'll say remove uh, current cell, uh, current cell uh, user. This will work fine for the previous group, but will not work fine for, for, for this one, but we'll fix it now. Now in the other one, this one, I should change this one to uh, remove. Maybe I have a friend, but I notice this friend posting bad things. I don't want him to stay in, in my group. I made a mistake accepting him. Uh, then I want to remove him. In this case, what I'll do, I will remove him from here. And then he can request to be added uh, later uh, in, in, in this case. So I need to click here and click there. And now here, we what will happen to, to this one. Let's go back. I, I was clicking the wrong one. This is the one here I want. This one should be accept. Accept, yeah. The other one is down. Now you will be wondering why it looks like that here, but it's looking different there. If I hide this one, hopefully it's still not there, but anyway. So let's do that. I click on request. Now I need to remove this one from my approved. So I need to make changes. I am the current user. I need to remove people from my approved. And the person I need to remove from my approved is the one I clicked on. Look at this now. Sorry, Zoya, I didn't mean anything, but I'm clicking here just to demonstrate that one. So Zoya is it's gone from mine. Now she is appearing in the in the, in the other group, uh, and I will reject this one. I'll add it again. Now in now if I click on adding Zoya now, did I notice it's working perfect? Zoya been added to my approved and removed from my request. If I add Imad. The same thing. I'm adding, adding Ahmed. Yeah. And I see, uh, see Zoya came back to the normal list uh, here as well. I think you're using different, the same thing. Anyway, uh, to do, I can add this one as well uh, to do it. So I'm able now to re request, remove, and accept people. Now you can uh, request to join me again if you want, because I rejected you. You go back there, you can request to join me. You will appear here. I will remove myself as well. So I have no friend or any request at the moment, but I can see one came, I added him to my approved. So this is how it works. And I need to explain it uh, to you again and again. There are two things you will be confused about. And if you're confused, that means you're thinking right. Yeah, doesn't mean you are not thinking right. Let me take it step by step. Now here, when we said we re someone requested us uh, to, to, to add, uh, I can, let's start from here, yeah? Remember this one last time we said we uh, we we click on on request and if uh, that's fine so this will be added 
If I request, for example, uh, Zoya to be to, to be uh, my friend. Now, if if Zoya uh, accept me, then uh, then uh, I'll be in her list. But you're not seeing one thing we're missing here. <coughs> Zoya is in, in uh, I'll, be, I'll be in her list, yeah? Mm -hmm. but, but I can't see her here, although she, she is on, uh, I am on her list, because here I can see only my list, um, where I am, I am um, adding. If I want to show people who accepted me already, there, then I need to come with another list, saying this uh, list I approved to accept me, but these are people who, who I accepted. At the moment, these are the people I accepted, but who are the people accepted me already? Then I need to add another list here to show me people who accepted me, or I can add them to here, yeah? So there are people accepted me and people I accepted. At the moment, my page shows only people I accepted. But who are the people accepted, uh, acce accepted me? I need to come with another list. So what we can do, I'll go back to this and explain. You can see on my page now, the two are not near each other, yeah? But on the running page, they are near each other. Why? Because the size of this page allow it to be uh, beside each other. If I make it smaller, they will start moving down. You can see they are gone, they are down now. The two are down. This is the responsive design. So they move and come based on the list. Anyway, let's add the third list of uh, people accepted me. And we can later make it. So what I'll do, I'll copy this one. Copy. Uh, I will say here just like this, people accepted me. Later you can come with a better name uh, to do. Now we need to find the list here of people, yeah? Now this will be now different. This one will be different. Now I need to search in all the users and find the one that has approved is my name, okay? So I need to search all the users and find those who had my name and their approved list. Okay, so I click here and search for, and then search for all users and select here, approve contains me. Me is what current user, that's me. So this is the list of the people that has me there and uh, then their, their details will come. I don't need any request here. Uh, I think maybe this, we can leave it just like that and make this one little bit smaller, or not the 200 maybe, okay? And make this one 220. Why I'm wasting time on this one? Because basically, I want to show you that this space I have here is not that big. So I need to, so, so these are people accepted, added me to their list. I requested them to add me and they accepted me. So this people, and these people who requested me to add them to my list and I accepted uh, them. I think this should be, should be removed, not request. This one should be remove, remove, yeah? Okay, so now we have very good. Our friend relationship and everything is right. People who will request me will appear here. People who I will approve, they will come here. People I requested them to add me and they approve me will appear here, which is very nice. Uh, um, a system uh, to, to have.
So I'll add John. I don't know if John is there. I'll ask more people to add me if they can accept me. So we are able now to do this uh, nice uh, things, okay? Uh, to do, very good. Okay, so what can we do else? We have now our users or friends been added. We remember we had the home. If you go to the home and we start posting. Now, if I want to start allowing people to add comments to my page, we added all these things. We want them to add a comment saying, oh, this is great. It's very nice. And I thank you uh, for, for, for that. So how we can do that? Uh, we can add just a button saying comment. They click on it, it open a window, pop-up window. They can add their comments and their comments will go into, into the database. That's how logically it is. But more, there are more than that. We need to create a table or a database to store those comments. Yeah, so we need a database where to store it. And the database will include the person who added that comment and the comment. These are the two things. So who added that comment and what was that comment? That's what we need, okay? So we need to go to the data, data. We add here one, we'll call it comments. We'll call it anything, yeah? We'll just call it comments now. And then we will uh, we will do that. So let's add comments. Now, what should be in the comment should be two things. One is the person who made it made the comment, and the comment. The person who made the comment already there is one called creator. So that will take care of of, of that one. So the creator is a type of a user and it's already there. We just need to add the comment. So we can click here and say comments, and we can choose text. Notice now I have only four things. Three are already there, uh, four or five things. F four of them already there. The creator is already there, the modified date, the created date, and the slug. The slug is a special one we can use to do something uh, special. I can see some hands coming up. I'll come to you. Let me follow me to try to create the database. We will do it and then we'll come back. So we'll go to the comments and I can see. Uh, okay, so we added this. So we added just one table. We called it comments. In it, we added one field called comments type text and we have the creator and others here. Now, how we can do that? We need to go back to the index page. We have done this in the index. Don't try to do it in the friends. If you have the friends, I'm not sure if you did that. But if you go to the index page, we need now pop up to do that. But we need somewhere here, say add comments. Because at the moment, this is our page. There's no button people can click on it. Yeah, here there's no comment I can click. Uh, so we need to add a button here. So we'll go there and have a button. Again, I have to wait for the red to appear to add that one. Otherwise I'm adding it in the wrong place. So we'll take the outline. We will center it up and down. We will uh, just call it comments, yeah, that is not good enough. Then we can add more to it. So these comments are here and looks nice. Now, when the user click on comment, it should open a pop-up where that user can write his comments. And then we'll see where we'll store it. So let's come first with the pop-up, yeah? Pop-up, pop-up. We will do this pop-up here to any size. We will call it 
what should we call it? Comments. Important, you add it, you name it. You add it, you name it. Otherwise, you will be lost what, which one I'm doing. And change it to column. Okay. This is a very simple uh, page, yeah? So I need to add comments. Usually comment people add it in multi lines. We can use the rich text if you want, but let's use multi-line input. Not the normal input. The normal input will not be the best one because we need multiple lines. People can add paragraphs. So I add it there and I'll call it comments again. I will center it. I'll look at this and make it percentage. I'll make it 90. Okay. Now, up there, we need to add maybe a text up. We'll add it down here, then we'll add it up. We'll say, that, say add your comments. Okay. And this is what we will do layout it. We'll make it percentage. We'll make it 90. And we'll say make it previous. Okay. And we'll center it. Maybe we need to give it 20 from the top. Okay. And this one will give it maybe 10 from the down, just to look nicer. And then we can add a button here. Two buttons, yeah. One will layout, it will make it safe. Let's say safe. The other one will call it close. See, I add the two buttons, they came on top of each other. Why? Because that uh, pop-up is columned layout. Column lay layout things comes on top of each other. So I need to make these two as a group, but I want to make them what? Row group. So I click here, shift and click here, then right mouse and group elements as row container. They will become like that. So this container, I need to make sure it is percentage and it is 90. So it becomes similar to all everything. Yeah. And then I can center this. See, I'm making, when making it 90, everything, they all become the same size. Of course, I will not do the bottom, uh, bottom 90, but I'll do the bottom button like whatever size it should be. But the, the 90 is the container that holds these two buttons uh, to do. And we can usually do from down 10, from up 10. So it is de detached from that one. And that's it. Now, if, if for the pop-up, I can make the height zero now will become really very nice one. So now what, how we will do this? We need, when the user click close, we hide this one, yeah? This one, the name of it is pop-up comments. So when the user do this, we'll click here. We'll go to the appearance. We will click start. Those people who don't not patient don't want to repeat things multiple times, they face challenge learning. So what we will do here, we need to hide. So I'll go to the element. Every time you need to do the element, hide it, show it, change its value, whatever, you need to go to elements action. Element action where you deal with the elements. So this element, I want to hide it. So I click here, I go to hide and uh, it's pop-up comments. This is the one, yeah. That's it, this will hide it. Hiding is the easiest thing, yeah. Saving is a little bit, little bit harder. So we need to click on save here, click on save and click go there. Saving means we'll create a new data. So I want two things, then two. Create new data. On purpose, I, I pause here, yeah, because I want you to see the screen where am I, I clicked. So I went into data, then I went into create. Now, what we want to create, we need to create a comment in the database. 
So here I have only two databases so far. One is the post, which we dealt with it. The other one is the comment. Now the comment we have, we made a one mistake when we created the table. Remember, we added only comments and we said we have four already there, remember, in the database. We need to, to associate that comment with the post, which post really this comment is added to. If we do not include a post, the comment will be general. Uh, when I go to a page, I need to add the, the comments to a specific post, not to general. So if I click here, it will be added to this post. If I click somewhere here, this nice cat, the post will be added to that cat uh, post. Yeah, so I need to associate it with the post. So we went back to the table. We went into the comments, we came here. How to associate it with the post? We need to add one field. We will call it post. And what is the type of that? This is post as well, because we're adding it to the post. So we added one extra called post and we associated it with the post. Now let's go back here when we click on save. If we click on save, we we'll go here and we say what we want to do, we want to create a new comment. What are the fields we need to change? These two things. We need to add what are that comment, which post is associated with. Which comment is, is really the multi-line input comments? Yeah, which where it's coming from? Coming from the pop-up. This one, this one we named it multi-line comments. Okay, so this is the one we did. What is the post? The post is the actual post we, we, we clicked, uh, clicked uh, on. This is a little bit uh, more than that. So when I click on this comment, yeah, I need to, to store somewhere which post I, I had clicked on. Yeah, so I need to store somewhere which post I clicked on. If I clicked on the card or clicked on the video, or clicked, which one? And this one is uh, is is, uh, is something you need to know. Now, where you can store it, it's easy to store it in the pop-up. So this pop-up here, I can add to it a data type, and the data type of that one I can see post. Now, it, that means it's ready to be associated with the post. But when the user click here, I need to say that pop-up, yeah, that pop-up, which uh, I'm dealing with here, should have store, should display data. So I go to elements, display data, and the data I want to display in the pop-up, uh, comments, I want to display the parent post. This is basically what it says. It says, if I am here, if I clicked on this one, let me show you this one maybe better. If I clicked on, on, this, on this one, that means it will say send to the pop-up comments this post. So it knows you are associated with this post because later I can use it to store the new comment. If I click on this one, it means send to, to the pop-up uh, comments this post, yeah? So let's go back here and come to the form. Now we clicked on save as you remember, and we came here. We said you have two things, one comments you finished. Now, what is the post? The post should be the pop-up itself because the pop-up is storing that post. So I can say pop-up comments and then I'll find post. Yeah, I'll draw this one for you um, uh, uh, some, some time, but it's a little bit, um, you, need, you need to wait. Anyway, so this one is done now. So what we did, say store that one. After we save anything, we need to hide that comments or otherwise it will stay on the page and we'll be keep clicking on it. So this is hiding it. 
The other thing, when the user click on comments, we said we will send using display data to that pop up the current post. But also, we need to open that, show that form, comments form. So we click here and pop up show. Always the purpose of, of a button is to do some action. And this action here would do two things. One, send data to the pop-up and then ask the pop-up to appear on the screen. And that will do it. Now, in this case, if I start or anyone start adding comments, they will be added to the database, but we will not see them on the page. So if I click here, it will bring this. This is a nice cat. Very nice, okay? Saved, it's added, but I, I don't see it anywhere, yeah? Usually on the Facebook below this one, you'll find a list of comments being added. So we need to find the place where we can add those comments down. And it can come and say, oh, uh, I like it, okay? I added another one to it, yeah, and so on. But you notice when I click again, I'll find this, I like it. I don't want it to, to appear. I want to have this empty. So one more thing I can do on the pop-up comment is when you click on save, it saves everything, but I need to delete. So there's something called here, element reset data. Reset data of pop-up comments. And now if I do this, show you how we did it last time and uh, it was good. If I add here, grade university and click save. If I click again, I will not see grade university because I do every time I need an empty page to, to add. But later you can add, you can change your comment if you add comment. Now, our challenge is displaying the comment. After the user added, it should start appearing here. So where we add it, design, you would expect is we add something here down. Yeah, we'll add something here down to display those comments. Now, when you have a list of things, list, not only one comment, usually everyone will add a comment, yeah? And then I want to display them. If a list of things, you need the repeating group. <coughs> so repeating groups allow you to display a list of things. Like when you notice when I did the friends or the users, we use a repeating group because there are more than one user, there are more than one friend. One group will do one only. Repeating group will do multiple. So we need to find this repeating group. And here is our repeating group. Where should I add it? It should come here below this one, yeah? And we can add, add it here. Now, this repeating group was not added properly. So let's do it again. Repeating group. Add them somewhere here. Okay, they added there. I'll move them uh, down. I'll make it maybe 90 just for, for sake of this. And as a percentage, I'll make it 100. So it stays within, within the same size like the others. Now, I wanted to display what? I wanted to display the comments. Yeah? So what data should, should this one deal with? Should deal with the comments. So I need to go to the appearance and these are the two things I need to follow. First one is the comments. The second one, I need to find the comments that is related to this one. Yeah, to the specific <laughs> post, sorry. I'm talking too much, and this is why I'm. Okay, so that's the two things. We need to find all the comments related to that post. 
So if I am looking, for example, at, at this page, I should see the comment related to that one. If I'm looking at this one, I should see related to this one. I should not see the comment uh, if you will. So these are the two things, one comments. The second thing we need to search for comments. Now we need to specify a condition. This is the first time. So constraint or condition. So only should display only comments related to that post. So we need to say the post of that comment should be equal to uh, the post, uh, current cell post. That's the one we'll do. So now we will see only the comments related to that one. Okay, now we done the setup of the group. We need what to display inside. So we need the text and bring that text and wait for the red one to appear. Let's draw something here and we can make it, uh, make, make the test, uh, the, the group layout row. Remember, I always do the group like row. And let's make this one 30, so it becomes a little bit bigger. And a percentage will make it uh, 90, make it takes a bigger uh, space. Now, what should we display inside this one? This is always the case, current cell, current cell, current cell, always current cell, current cell comment. Now we've done that one. We have only one error here, which I don't like. Uh, current cell comments, comments, yeah. That's good. Now, current cell comments, comments. Now, we'll, if you come here and if you added comments, now your comments will appear. Uh -huh, someone added, same here, same here, and said, amazing, great university. And you can see those people who started adding, this is nice, cat. that's me, I like it, that's what I said. And uh, the comments will start appearing uh, here, yeah, so now you can add the comments. Now, how I know who added this comment? Yeah, so I need the name of that person. Let me add the email because I know some of you don't. Now, basically it's easy. I can take this one and make a copy of it, copy paste. This one was displaying the comment. Let's make this one display the creator. Uh, email address. And maybe we can make this one font smaller, we'll make it font 10 and make it bold. And I can make the height of this one a zero because it takes uh, that. And I, if I look here now, this is beautiful. Yeah, see, I know who added each one. The same here is added by Zoya. And this added by Zoya, by Zoya. Zoya is, you are active Zoya, I have to say that. Okay, I can see you are adding comments. I don't see the others adding comments. So please add comments. This is me who said, I like it, uh, uh, it is. Now you can see some of it do not have comments but I still see some space here. I should not see this space here um, in, in, in this place. That's one thing I need to fix. The other issue in this repeating group, if I click somewhere here and you come to the appearance, you can see it's limited to only four. I want more, so I remove this one. This now will give me more and I'll make this one say 30. Uh, it will look nicer uh, like that. And if I come here, I'll see them better, maybe. Better organized. Yeah, they are there. So I can show you the photo of the person, uh, the date he created, uh, that one. And you notice some people created empty uh, also. Uh, I should uh, restrict it. You cannot add empty uh, comment. Uh, for for example, that's what we will do now. Okay. So very good. The comments maybe we'll make this one now. The the issue that I said 
I need to make, let me make this one for here. I want this to disappear. If there is nothing there, it should not take a space. Like for example, here, oh, that's good. This is good. Nobody added any comments. So this one should disappear. Yeah. So I need to hide that repeating group if it's empty. How we do that? Every time you want to hide anything, go go to the condition. Hide anything, changing the color of the thing dynamically, you need to do the condition. So in the condition, we can say this rebooting group, list of comments count is less than one, if this is the case, then visible, make it not visible. And then in the layout, I will click these two things. Now what I did, I said, in the condition, I said, this repeating group, list of comments, count less than one. If there is less than one means zero. That means there is nothing there, so hide it. And you look at the design, it looks better now. See, very nice. So those do not have any comments, will not have extra space. Uh, there, oh, this is all good, cute. I like that one. It is a really nice cat, beautiful cat, beautiful eyes. Cats are nice. Uh, and, and this way now you can start adding comments. If I want to add comments to this one, say thank you for posting. This was great or something like that, yeah? Now it's added, added by me. I can add my photo there uh, if I want to do. So now you can start adding uh, comments to different things. But you notice some people adding comments with empty, uh, there's nothing there. So what I can do now in this pop-up, if I want this one to be must completed, cannot be empty in any form you, you want to make it. Then you go to the appearance, you will find this one. This input should not be empty. So if you click this one, now people who try to add uh, comments, like I come here and add comments and leave it empty, it doesn't work. Say to me, you need to have some data there. So this way you can control anything that you don't want it to be uh, ignored, uh, you want it to, to look like. Now here again, I have one issue with this one, is I need five right, five left, five right, five left. Very nice. We done. Now what are the things we need to enhance here? So I added a comment, I want to delete it. I added a comment and then I find this is not appropriate comment. I need, I need to delete it, yeah? What we can do, we can add a button here for delete. When you click on it, it delete that one. But that delete should appear only to the one who created the comment. So we don't get other people deleting other people comment and they start complaining saying why why people deleted my comment. So basically I can come here and add somewhere here, somewhere here, this one. I usually go to the out and make it delete one thing and we will move it to the end down here. I think this one, if I make it zero, it looks better. Yeah, this looks nicer. Now, when the user click on delete, I need first that delete appear only if I am the one who created the comment. It appears if I am only the one who created the comment. Where I do that condition. As I said, always you want something to appear, disappear based on the condition, you go to the condition. And in the condition, if we say if the current, if, if this comment cell, the creator of that one is the current user, yeah? 
If he is the current user, then show it. If he is not the current user, I don't show it. So if he's the current user, we will make it on. If he is not the current user by default, it should be uh, hidden so it doesn't appear. So I clicked this one. This element is visible on, on your page. I made it not. By default, when you open it, it doesn't appear. But if the user becomes the same user who created that comment, it appears. This logic, which is beautiful. If you work with it, you'll find your mind becomes uh, more effective. What you can see now, I, I will see delete in front of my uh, comments that I created. So I created this comment, I see delete, but I don't see it on amazing, it was that Zoya one. If I click here, I'll delete it. I didn't add the functionality to delete it, but you can see I have it where I should. Now I can make it comes on the right instead of coming here. We will do that uh, now. Uh, but let's first add the functionality to delete, which we don't have. If I click now, nothing will be deleted. How I do that? I click on delete. I go to the appearance. I go to the start flow. And then I'm deleting data. Deleting data, I go to data. And then I'll have here delete. Okay. Now, what thing I need to delete? Current cell comment, the first one there. Now, if I run mine, I can delete my comments and you can delete your comments. This one, gun, I deleted my comments, was not right comment, say, or I made a mistake on, on, on that, delete it. Hmm? So we have now good functionality, but the only thing, if you are a good designer uh, and you look at nice colors and things like that, you can create a nice, nice social media for you or your friends. Uh, you can use to give both things and, and have some discussion on a project or assignment or you want to uh, discuss anything. Now we can add more to, to this one. Like for example, when you post now, you're posting on the text with some video and images. We can add, you can upload files uh, to it. That's we can we can we can do. Uh, so that's that's uh, looks really uh, nice uh, to do. Okay, so I'll stop here and listen to you. There are other things we need to do, but let's stop here, and then we can do some other things. I was hoping, uh, I think tomorrow we'll shift away from this app and we'll create like a business app. If you want to create uh, Amazon store, for example, uh, or uh, uh, noon uh, store, for example, uh, to sell and, and buy things, how we create that. And we can create it. Uh, uh, same thing we do. Um, so this is very simple. Uh, I think as you can see, if you practice, if you repeat it, repeat it. For me, you see it's becoming a piece of cake. Why? Because I repeated it. I invested time on it. I thought this is something important. It can help speed up things and create nice applications. Let me master it. Yeah. And then give it the time. And do it, do it, do it, do it, becomes a piece of cake. You know what to do. If you look back, you will see the steps are the same. The same, but because of you master it, you, it becomes easier. If you don't master it every time, you're confused. Or oh, what this? You, you do small one and you repeat it two times, three times, then you master it. Then you later come with your own way. Uh, the way I do things now, I have different, my, my ways to do it, uh, different from you will find somewhere in, in the manual because when you master it, you will be able to come with new, new ideas and new ways of, of doing things. And, uh, and there are so many tools and tutorials. Uh, I said last time, 
if you go to the main page, you will see the resources. And here you have a wealth of resource. There are so many videos here that will take you to everything. Here you want to learn elements. You click here, it will start showing you things related to elements, how you deal with elements uh, in, in your thing. You need to look at the actions or the events. You need to look at the data source. You need to look at uh, data operations. Uh, these are there. You can also start looking at tutorials. And there are many, many tutorials. Uh, if you just select this one, these are some tutorials show you how to create card and component. Very nice. Let me run this one for you. Maybe let's say here, optimize screen for video. Okay. Let's do this one. So this one has a group of videos. So you start watching the first one. Let's look at this one. Create a card component. Yeah. This is beautiful. This is in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to build a card element and see how to use it in designs that we can create with the new responsive controls. Card elements are a popular component that apps use for varying reasons. For instance, thumbnails of videos or posts like you see on the Academy, or like in our repeating group examples, we use cards to showcase different movies. With the new responsive controls, they are very easy to build. So for our example, we'll build a card component and use it in a pricing table. To do this, we'll add a group on the page with the container layout set to row. The page itself is a column, so we can stack other groups on top or on bottom of our pricing table. We'll uncheck fixed width for the group. In doing so, our group automatically grows to its max width, which is currently infinite. So it fills the parent container, which here is our page. We do this so we can use the entire group as the section to hold our cards. Let's also increase the height of this group. You, this so in, you can use the up you know arrow keys thing. to increment by one. You can or if you hold shift, you can increment by low. five. Now we have a group to hold our cards. So let's build the card directly inside it. First, we draw the group to resemble a card and give it a name. Remember, we can always adjust the width and height afterwards. So it doesn't have to be perfect as you draw it. And stop it. And Card designs generally follow. Go and, and do what he says. I'll go back a little bit on a step. Our container, mm -hmm. which here is our page. You have we do this so we can use the entire group as the section to hold our Usually cards. I run it on two. Let's also increase the height of this group. You can use the up, down arrow keys to increment by one, or if you hold shift, you can increment by five. Now we have a group to hold our cards. So let's build a card directly inside it. First, we draw the group to resemble a card and give it a name. Remember, we can always adjust the width and height afterwards, so it doesn't have to be perfect as you draw it. Card designs generally follow a top to bottom approach, so a column layout is this recommended. Is from what we said here. And However, other card designs step. may go left to right, in which case. So, take you step by step. So, how I reached that, I went into video lessons, and then I selected tutorials, and then I started going for the one this different this is the card which beautiful uh, design if you want to create responsive engine and there are more here and each one is group of videos how to set up a custom font your own font for example okay so there are so many resources they have something also called academy i'm not seeing it here but uh, but if you go anywhere and search Bubble Academy, there is the Bubble Academy. Yeah. Uh, so the Bubble Academy, if you use this one, maybe I should give you this link. It has also so many resources uh, and videos and things that help you learn. And you can go through this from a learn with user built in content. Uh, so many resources. This one, you can learn a lot. I will show you one on YouTube. There is a channel, there's someone there who does this one. Uh, I'll show you, uh, I'll give you his video as well. He is one of the best. I, I have to say uh, the way he, he does explain uh, bubble. 
is is really nice. I like his style. is very slow, very uh, build. Uh, I find you his build. If you want to learn, then you have everything. Oh, let me find. I can't now. I lost uh, his, his name. So many great resources. So many. Uh, I want you to know all those good people. Ah, here it's here. It's now possible to build Web3 crypto blockchain related applications with no code. Uh, what we'll be doing in this tutorial is building a just a really tiny summary of a coin and token listing page uh, and we'll get our data from coin market cap so let's jump in and see how we can pull this together so here's our basic page the main functionality here is pulling in a list of the latest coins and tokens okay and then displaying the ticket the name and he has a, a nice uh, design uh, uh, aspect. So I'll give you the channel. Here is his channel. And, uh, and you just please invest time. I'm giving you all these resources because I want you really to learn. And uh, you can force uh, learn and become the best bubble developer i want to hear this one day i can you send me a message saying that hamad i built this bubble app and it's working beautiful that will be the best thing i can hear a bubble or anything else if you learn bubble well you will learn others there are so many other tools similar but bubble is really one of the best you have you need to do and this, I gave you that link, and you can see it's just so many examples with very short time you can learn it. To master anything, you need, again, to repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. Then you master it. And uh, without repeating it, uh, then you will be uh, just forgetting it, I have to, I have to say like that so you have that resources i think you wanted maybe from me the academy link ah, there is the academy link i'll put it in the chat okay my objective of this course is just to get you aware of this and you start becoming interested in it and then you will explore things. Nobody can teach you everything. And my advice, don't wait for people to teach you. Learn yourself. Learning is more important than teaching. And universities, in my opinion, should be a place to help people learn, not teaching people to do. But at the beginning, sometimes you need to be aware of something. You need someone to show you, oh, this is what we can do, and this is how it can do, and this is the behind it. But once you see that demonstration, you jump on it and learn it yourself. The resources are there. With these videos, you can repeat it slowly. You do the same thing he does in the video. Do it yourself now. Do it yourself now. Think of how I can use this one, where it can be used. For example, the card one. Or I can use it if I want to build store. Then you, you start using it. Then you customize it to your need. And, and, and this way you start learning. Learning is a process. And you are young people are very good with technology. Uh, so you should be able to create some amazing uh, uh, solutions. Let me stop and see your questions. Uh, I want to hear some of your discussion. What I need you to start discussing is not really how to click here and click there as i said the resource is there you can open these videos they will give you step by step you will do it i want you to start thinking of what's your idea i need to hear from you uh, some ideas what app you want to create now that's one thing the second thing what that app will do what problem you solving 
with that with that with that app. Okay, what should be the functionality of that app? It will do what? Who will use it? Why they need to use it? Okay, is there another app similar to this one? Fine, there's a similar one, but I need uh, my app will will solve this problem which that other app is not doing. Maybe become more easy to use. Usability uh, is, is, is one thing. Maybe it has additional features that others do not have. So start thinking of what app you want to develop. Take it from, from, from there. The technical aspect, the resources are there and you can learn them um, as, as you like. Now I can see only two hands, always Zoya and Via. They are the active one. Thank you. Then we'll go with uh, Zoya first and then I'll go to, to Zoya. Yes, Zoya. Again, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sir, I'm facing an issue that I want to display the data. Yeah. As so, what do you need? Uh, post, I think. Uh, let me ask you a question, uh, uh, Zoya. When I was explaining, I said, what tool you should use to display the data? What was the answer for that? Data. Yeah. If I want to display data, which tool I should use? Uh, in bubble. Uh, one second. Why? Why I am asking you? Because I want you to remember it. Yeah, I could have given you the answer, and I given the answer multiple times, but I want you to remember it. And always when you want to remember something, you think about it and you get challenged about it. Then you remember it. If you're giving you the information like that, you will forget it because I did it multiple times. The answer is, what do you think? Data. No, not data. I need a tool. Uh, what I mean by the tool, I'll show you on the screen what I mean by, by, by the tool. Now, from here, from this list here, which one so, should I use to display the data from this list? From this? Yeah, from the, this uh, toolbar or what they call it, visual element. From visual element, which one is used to display data? Okay, you don't remember, I will tell you what it is. It is the repeating group. And why it's repeating group? Because the data usually is a repeated data. Yeah, if you look at products in the store, there is, there is the repeating group, yeah? So the, the data usually repeated data in the database. So if you look at students, there are 20 in the class, okay? It's a repeated data, why? Because it has the same structure, it has student name, student ID, okay? student maybe uh, nationality, and everyone has these columns, but different data. So this is why we use a repeating group. A repeating group, remember it. I want display data, repeating group. That's it, that's the answer. So I need to add this repeating group to the page. Otherwise, we will not display data because that's the tool mobile used to display data. In fact, all programming has something similar. If you study Java or Python or C, they have something called four loops and while loops. The while loops are displaying the same data. The four group displaying the same data. data. So you need display data. That, it's more complicated maybe in, in, in Java for, for, from here. But here, yes. Java, take, take this repeating, repeating group, you add it to the page. That's the first thing you do. Once you add it, there are two things you need to specify. It's clear. There is red one means this is needed. You cannot ignore it. So what should be in this one? I need to think now, what data I want to display? Okay. If I want to display what data? I click here, I'll find all the data that in bubble. I do, I want to display user or comments or post or just text. 
number and other things get it. Usually, usually, listen to me. Usually, the data you need to display are the first three, four, five, not down. Yeah. So now we need to decide which data you want to display. I'm not giving you the answer. I'm giving you the steps. Step one, you add a repeating group. Step two, you need to decide which data you want to display. Are you displaying comments, displaying posts, displaying user, displaying products, displaying students, displaying courses? What data you want to display? So you. Sir, you I want. Yeah. I want okay. to display post, but I'm not getting that as an option. Maybe you, you didn't create post in the data. It will not come from nowhere. If you remember the first step I did, I went here and created something called post. And I did in the post, post content, thumb uh, down, thumb up. I created it here. Because I created here, if I come here in the repeating group and click here, it will appear. Let me go and create something here, call it product, yeah? Products, okay? Create something. If I come here and click on this one, click here, products will appear. It's not coming from, from, from nowhere. If I don't create it, it will not appear. So but first- I created you, it. Yeah, first you need to create it in the data. You didn't create it. If you go to the data, click on data, and look, do you have it there? If it's there, you will find it. If it's not there, you will not find it. I, I allow you to share screen. I, I know it's just not there because you didn't create it because you were struggling in the first issue. You didn't follow me on creating the, the post. So it's easy. Just go into the data, create something called post if you want. And when you create it, you need to add some feel to it. Post means there is a content, there is a thumb up, there is a thumb down, at least those things you, you need to, to add there, okay? I like for, I created a product. There's nothing in product. These are already in, I can't even change them. Maybe I need to add something called product name. So I'll call it product name. And what type that product name? Is it number? No, product name is, is a text. Okay, maybe I need to add description to this product, description, okay, and that's a text. I maybe I need to add an image to that project, okay? Image, let's call it image. Product so people can see there is an image of that product. Maybe I need to add to the product expiry date. Yeah, these are the data that needed. So expiry date, is it a text or a number? No, it is a date. There's something called date here. Now I added the product has all those components, has description, expiry date, image and name. If I come back here into the visual and click here and click on this, I'll find the product there. So I select the product, okay? Still, I, these two things I must complete. This data source and type of data. If I want to display data, I need these two things. If I do not complete them, I will not display data. So the first one, I decide what data. I want to display products here. I'm not doing you the post because I want you to understand. So what, I, what product I want to display? Do I want to display all product or product their expiry date is more than today? Can be, or I need to display a product from certain category. If I come here and add to the data, there is product, I can add category. This is food, category food, electronics, whatever it is. So I have a different, I need what list of product I want to display. I want to display them all, or I need to display specific type of products. When you want to display something, you need always to ask this question. What I want to display, what I want to display. For. Then in that product, what group of products I want to display? You have the option to display all of it. So if you want to display all of it, what you do, you need to specify here what you want to display. You click on click, and then you go do 
a search for. Again, I repeat this one. This is always the same thing. Yeah, you need these two things. You need product and you need do a search for. It's not always, but I can say 99% of the case. So just remember it. I want to display data, I put a repeating group. I select the data content, product, student, whatever. Then I select do search for. This are just now became a memory exercise. And then when I do so I select from here product. I said this multiple times. This one and this one need to be the same. If I select here, for example, user, it will not be right. Yeah, I need to select product. Yeah. This one product, this one product, this one product, this one product. Now, if I have some certain condition, I need specific type. For example, I need category to be equal to food. I want to display only food here. I'm giving an example. Then I can add this condition. If I don't have condition, let it go. I have no condition. Now, once I do this, I've, I've finished now three steps. Step one, I added repeating group. Step two, I selected the content type. Step three, I did search for and selected product. Okay, now I need one more step. One more step, what I want to display on, the, on inside. I want to display a product name, product category, and other things. In this case, I go into text, okay? And select a text inside. Now, again, this mistake you could have done that you put the text outside somewhere. Yeah, you came here and you put the text like this. This text has nothing to do with the group. This is wrong because it's outside the group. I need to, again, this is very simple thing. I select until I see the red line. See this red? When the red comes, I draw. I don't see the red, I stop. Now, added this one. See, it's added. I can give it maybe, uh, let's make this one a column, a row, like I told you the repeating group to be low. And this, I can make it maybe longer, a little bit, so it takes more space. Now this box is empty now. What should this box display? It should display, remember what I added in the product. I added category, I added description, I added expiry, I added image, I added name. Which one of this I need to display? If I go here and click on this one, I want to display at least the name, at least the name. So if I click here, this is the first one come on the screen. What is the first one? Current sale product. That's the one I need. So current sale product. Then what I need to display from that product. I want to display the name. So I go for the name. Okay. This is one. Let's make this one a little bit smaller. Make it 200. So we have more space. Yeah. So this now displaying what? The name. I can add to this one. Control copy, okay, beside it. Here I want to display, for example, the expiry date. Just I select the last one and find expiry date. So now this thing name, this one displaying expiry date. I want to display, for example, the third one. Let's make this one a little bigger. So you are uh, become happy with this. Let's make it 100 just to show you the, how big screen. So this one, what should I do on display? I look here, maybe the category. So this will tell me, for example, this is tomatoes, uh, expiry date, 5th of uh, November or whatever. And it is tomatoes, later it will show. And this way I display. Now, if I run this one, I'll find nothing because I have no products. I created just the table. So the steps again. You add the repeating group. In the repeating group, you add two things. What data you want to display, type of content, and then the source of the data. Source of the data, search for. This word search for, remember, okay? And then 
you search for, you select the same data you selected here. Once you do that, you start adding some components inside in the first row. This component, the first one, you click on it and you, you go there and you'll find it come here, current cell. Why? Because this form is cell. This is cell one, cell two, cell three, cell four, cell five. Yeah, so we need the current cell. So the current cell, what we want to display, we want to display the name of the product. And then the second one, I want to display, for example, expiry date. I'm not saying it's always to be. The third one should be the food. So you master these steps, master those steps, and repeat it multiple times. Then you will be okay. You, okay. okay? Sir, yes. I am supposed to display the data for post. Okay, then do it. Yes, I did it. But yeah. when I want to display it as text, I'm writing current sales post. My first question, uh, let me uh, allow you to share screen so I can see what you did. I hope you created a data call post. That's one thing. I did. And you added data inside. Yeah. yeah. Let me stop sharing and then I'll show you how you do that. Is here. We'll give you access to show me uh, what you did. Okay. Very good. Sorry, Zia. I'll come to you. Just let's finish this. I think what I repeated to Zoya will help you and help others. This is why I spent time explaining it again, because this is a normal doubt. Everybody has. That's no issue with that one, but, but just don't make the same mistake multiple times. Now, you added the repeating group. Very good. Can we go to the repeating group first and make sure it is correct? Click on this group on the page. No, no, don't add. The one you have now, click on it in the middle. Yes, click. Good. Do click. Ah, thank you. So you have data post. Very good. Now you added current cell. Click on current cell post. Okay. You have an error there. Now, this is good. Now, now what you can see here, it telling you, you want to display current post. Okay. The post has multiple fields. One, listen to me. Don't move mouse and get confused. Listen. I was opening my mic. Yeah, you don't move the mouse. Now the post has different information in it. Yeah, isn't it? It has the content of the post. It has the creator of the post. It has the date it's created. It has the date it's modified. From those four, which one you want to display? You need to click on more. You see more there? Look at the red one. No, 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 don't, don't. Current sales post. Yeah, you know, you see, you don't have something called content here because when you created the post, you just created the post and that's it. Go to the data, please. Click on the data tab. Data. Click, very good. Now look what you have on the post. You have creator, modified date, uh, created data, and slug. Yes. The post should have content at least. So you need to add a field, click on new field and say content. Okay, and the content is text. Yeah, and click create. Good, now go to the design. Very good. Now, if you click on more, there is, if you see more there, yes. Now you see content. Click on content. Sir? Content. The one you added. You want to display content, Zoya, isn't it? Click on it. Yeah, exactly. This became now blue color. If you click somewhere, it will become blue color. Sir, but content is not necessary. No, that it will always be in text. Listen to me. When people post something to social media, what do you post? They post content, either text or image or video. This is why they post. They, they, they click just and, and then submit. No, they click and add some data 
which the content, and then click submit, isn't it? So you need so, content. Good. So, so you need to fill your data tab for the post. The post has content, has thumb up and thumb down, as I explained in the, in the video. These things need to be added there. And when you come to display, you click on it, you select current cell post, and then from that one, you select which one of these component of the post you want to display. And in this case, we want to display content. Did you understand it, Zoya, or not? Yes. You sure? Now let's yes. practice it. Go to the data, data, okay, data, and add another thing, uh, uh, create a new field on, to the post, okay, okay, good, click, and then add, for example, image. and select in the field type image. Good, create. Now, go to the design. Okay, show me how you can add the image now. Not here, this is for the content. Leave this one, don't touch it. You need to add beside this one on the design, don't touch anywhere. Wow. Beside this box in the design, you need to add an image. Click on the repeating group. Click on the repeating group, not on the black one. No, no, not that repeating. The repeating group on the screen, the one on the screen. The one on the screen. Yes, please. Oh, thank you. Now, here you need to add a box for the image. Uh, on every? No, on the first one. We deal only with the first line. We don't deal with that. So go find an image and draw it on the first line, okay? Now, how we can display the image here? You click on it's the- It's a dynamic display. Dynamic. So, per, yeah, per, per search posts. And now you get it. Now, if I want to display the date, it's, it's created. So I should, okay. Then show me what you do. You go back to the- yeah, here, very good, that's good. Okay, excellent, yeah, okay. And then, created, it's down, down, the last one, uh, before the last one, yeah, that's it. So now you know how to add uh, the display data. You need a repeating group. You need to set up the content type. You need to display the data source. You need to add components to the, to the first row. And everyone, you select current cell post. And then you select from that one what you want to display. Is it the name? Is it the content? Is it the creator? Is it the date? It whatever. That's how it works. Thank okay. you so much. So. Pleasure, pleasure. But just repeat this one. Now you know it. If I am you, I will do it at least three times. But you need some data now. If you run it, you will see nothing because you need a pop up window to add the data and then you display data. Data cannot come from nowhere. You need to, do, to look at that one uh, later. Okay. So I also wanted to ask you that if we want to publish it, so then we need to add money or we can just publish it? We will come to the publishing later. We need, we need to, to register it in, in one way. You can keep the, the testing, but if you want to register it with the name, you have to pay. But you still we can- need to pay money. With, yeah. You still can use the test one without, without publishing it. Okay, so I need to answer uh, uh, Zia. Okay. And uh, we will come back. But uh, I'm, I know this will help everyone uh, to what we discussed with uh, Zoya. Okay, I'll go to Zia and then I'll come to you, Imad. Sorry. Zia, Zia, how are you today? Fine. Today, I absolutely slept. 
in between the class i woke up because of my sister so can you please send the recordings uh, okay i will do i will upload it to the same place today inshallah but, but the links i sent into into the chat uh, store them somewhere they are very useful i sent some uh, links there which are very useful i think you can you can watch them but i will send the recording for sure Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, let's go to the next one. We have uh, we have Imad. Yes, Imad. Good evening, uh, doctor. How are you? Well, very good. Uh, I'm really pleased uh, to to have this course with you. Actually, uh, I have like uh, I can't wait to to see how we are going to uh, extend this uh, learning with the online store. Actually, this is my main purpose of joining. <laughs> so, like, uh, are we going to to see like how do we um, how do for example uh, people how can they uh, announce products and how can other people uh, like purchase and uh, probably the usage of uh, credit cards and stuff like this. Yeah, we're not going to, to cover, cover all. Uh, yeah. I will show you the resources where you can, you can go and, and do that. We'll cover that. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to do it practically with, with you. Yes, uh, yes, I understand. Yeah. All right, all right cool. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Pleasure, pleasure. Okay. Uh, uh, I saw a hand and then the hand disappeared. I think because maybe Ahmad asked the same questions and people notice this is the answers that uh, they're looking for. So thank you again. I think, uh, I know it's, it's too much of things we cover, but trust me, if you practice, and take it slowly using the resources I shared. You will master it. And again, I'll say one more. This will be something that will help you in the future. Uh, no code platform are growing and they will be the future. People will, in my opinion, only maybe those big companies will continue using coding the traditional way of doing it. The advancement of AI and uh, computer software engineering uh, will make no code and chat type of conversation uh, like chat uh, GPT or chat bot or other thing. They will become in the future is the most uh, uh, used. And there are so, so many resources telling us that uh, no code it will be 60% at least in the next uh, few, few years of the application development. And this is something you need to, to build on it. And you have time. You are still, most of you still very young. And if you start practicing and building those skills, you will be able to, to do some amazing things. And think of also not only doing it for just uh, fun or it's good to do that, things for fun. But you, maybe you will become one of those who create really huge businesses. And with this code, you can create some apps that so many people were waiting for to, to use. And you can integrate it with almost anything uh, here because the integration uh, part is, is becoming mostly depending on API, which this tool is providing, and also mostly the uh, depending on other integration tool like Microsoft Power Automate or Zabir or uh, many of those tools that you can link uh, to Bubble. Uh, for example, I did yesterday for, for our meeting uh, uh, system, which we use in the, in the university to record our meeting and everything. I added an integration for the minutes of the meeting. So people who write at the minutes of the meeting, now they can use AI, ChatGPT and others, uh, through our meeting system to, to, to take the minutes. If they just record uh, the, the meeting or, or add just brief on every topic that was discussed, by one click, it will be uh, generated using 
um, artificial intelligence, and they will have a very uh, coherent, consistent uh, minute that they can, of course, uh, modify and, and, and validate. We have in our system uh, something for the faculty. They can go to our website, add just a text or some pictures, and click a button. It will be sent to to AI system, which will create a video uh, for them explaining the topic, and and then uh, the video will appear on 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 the platform. They can download it, use it in their in their uh, classes. Uh, without create, doing anything with the video. It, it does that automatic uh, for them. Um, there's so many things. We have teams who develop systems for st student transportation, go going from university to home or from home to university and going somewhere else where they can book the, 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 the uh, uh, trip and pay for it uh, online. Uh, and then uh, they can. Uh, also uh, select their location using uh, Google Maps so the driver will find them uh, with, with no issues. And so many systems, which uh, very easy to create I have with good practice. Would, nothing will be easy without practice. If you practice, 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 I have to say it, and one more practice, uh, things become very easy. The, the challenge is to take off this. I like this example uh, of someone I saw uh, giving this idea is take off. If you look at the aircraft, uh, for example, the aircraft, it will uh, be on the runway. Uh, the, the pilot will start the engine to the maximum uh, power. It will run 100 meters, 200 meters, and consuming lots of fuel and everything. But, but still on the ground until the moment it reaches its full potential and it starts flying. The pilot will continue maintaining that engine power and thing until it reaches to the level uh, that it should reach to. And at that time, it moves without almost any energy. It becomes normal. So you need to get the takeoff point if you don't spend energy, energy until you get to that point, then you're losing. Uh, you give up in the middle. You think you will fly without doing anything. You have to spend really uh, uh, time, energy until you get there. Once you fly, you fly. You don't need anything. You will be able to do more and more and more and more and more and you'll be successful in, in that one. So get yourself in that level reach the takeoff and maintain that takeoff until you are in the level that you need to be on. And then you will be, will be, will be things will become easy. Uh, I wish you every success. Uh, to, tomorrow we have um, our other uh, sessions. Uh, there will be maybe some, some delay or issues with that because I'll be traveling to al -Ain. We have uh, some competitions uh, happening there. I'll be on my way. Hopefully, I will reach before four. If I find it challenging, uh, I will send you uh, a message. So, wish you all the best and see you tomorrow, inshallah.